What is going on guys? So today I'm going to show you how to create your own Microsoft SQL Server database on your computer and then open it up and manage it through SQL Server Management Studio. So as you can see, I have Management Studio open here and it's prompting me right away to connect to a server. So that's what we're going to have to create. We're going to have to create a server and then we can create a bunch of databases within that server on Management Studio here. And that's the whole thing. So creating this server, we'll have to go to Microsoft.com and install Microsoft SQL Server. So you'll need two things because Management Studio here, at the end of the day, it's just like a UI tool for you to be able to manage your database easier. It's not like the database itself. So let's get the database itself, you know, create the uh, server itself. Um, so this is the site. I'll paste this in the description here, microsoft.com slash uh, SQL Server slash SQL Server downloads. Um, and then I'm going to click download now on developer. Okay. And now we can walk through this together. So um, we can do basic for installation type here. And then we can just agree to these uh, terms and services. I recommend just keeping this in program files. You can see it's not like a ton of uh, space. It only takes like one gigabyte pretty much. So it's not gonna take up like a ton. And you need a minimum of eight gigabytes free. It'll show you in megabytes, but yeah, <laughs> that's all pretty much. So let's install this. Okay, I've probably made a jump cut in this video here, um, but SQL Server is finally finished installing on my computer. And now we are brought to this screen here. So there's a few important things, or actually one very important thing to note here, and it's the connection string. So what does this mean? It gives you the name of the server, um, the name of the main database and the trusted connection equals true. Like I recommend just leaving that, but I would copy this and paste this in a notepad before proceeding at any, <laughs> any more steps, just in case something happens, you have the connection string. So we have this in notepad. Now we can go to the next step. And what is that? We have to go back to SQL Server Management Studio because now we've created the server and the server's automatically been created under Windows authentication because I have a Windows machine here. Um, it does the simplest path. I it didn't set up SQL Server authentication. So I'll show you what the difference is really quick. When we go back to Management Studio, we see we have server name here. So it may not appear initially. So click browse for more. Do not worry about network servers. This will be a local server since it's on your computer. You'll see database engine here, click plus. And this is the server you just created and SQL server 2022 or whatever version you have. So click okay. And now you'll see Windows authentication is automatically selected. And what does this mean? It uses your credentials that you logged into your computer as authentication to log into the database. So if you're already logged into your computer, you're good to log into this database on your computer. You can set up an additional password if you want afterwards and log in this way with SQL Server authentication and give like a unique username and password. You can also, once you connect to your server, um, you can go to security here, you can go to logins and you can create a new user so new login, and then you can do SQL Server authentication this way. So we can do test user. Oh shit, that's the, yeah, that's the password. Okay, well, we can do test as the password, test as the password, and then the username will be test user. Um, and yeah, now we can click okay. So now if I disconnect from my local SQL Server and I try to connect again, database engine, let me go to SQL Server Authentication. So we'll do test user, and then we'll do test. I'm sure we can remember this password. Okay, I must have rushed the process. What are the details? Login failed. 
Okay, maybe I maybe I uh, am trying the wrong way here. Either way, you have your um, local server set up. I'm just curious of this. If I do this, click save. Um, do properties, server roles. Let's give it sysadmin. And now let's try to disconnect and log in again. Test user, test. Okay, well that is normally, <laughs> sorry guys, that is normally how you set up SQL Server authentication. I'm not sure why that's not working, but yeah, you basically can set up new users that way by going to logins and then doing new login and then setting up new users. But that's not really the point of this video. I'll make another video on that and we'll we'll do that properly. For this video, I wanna show you how to just create your own database because right now we're in the server here and we don't have a database, right? So let me just right click and then, or sorry, you have to right click on databases here and then click new database. And now we can give it a name. So I'll give it my database as the name owner can be default um, and you can give it some columns as well so if you click oh no this is not what we want to do so we can click ok and you'll see initially there's no tables in your database right so you can create a new table by doing right click new query and we can just do create table my table and then the command let me just copy this we can do something like this so i have a command here um, we can do like an id as the primary key name age email and we can just execute this and now take a look. So if I refresh my database, I take a look at tables again. Now I'll have a table. So now I have a database on my computer. I have a table and I can mess with it in uh, Microsoft Management Studio, SQL Server Management Studio. Sorry, I didn't get the login working, you guys. I'll get that working in another video, I promise. But for the sake of this video, I'd say this meets the criteria. You can do it through Windows authentication and you can create your own database. You can create tables this way and you can also insert data in your tables. I'll make videos on how to do inserts, updates, stored procedures, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.